Now, a very interesting and perplexing question is what determines what makes it into a long-term memory? Uh, if you think of it, since apparently there is no seeming uh, limit to just how much can go in long-term memory and for how long, it would be tempting to think that just about anything that makes it into short-term memory ought to make its way into long-term memory. Yet, as you know well from your own experience, that's not the case. In fact, uh, it's extremely frustrating how long-term memory seems to work. I mean, um, you know, there might be some random events from your childhood that you still remember to this day, and you encoded them with no effort. In fact, you know, maybe you never even thought, thought about them since then, but you have those memories available to you, and it took no effort to place them into your, your long-term memory. On the other hand, it is such a struggle sometimes, even when you voluntarily really want to put something in uh, to long-term memory. I mean, the contents of this class, I'm sure, are riveting for everybody. And yet, you will still put effort to try to commit to memory the, the notions that we are studying uh, in, in this class. Um, and so, a good question is why? Why do some things get encoded, others not? What are the determinants of encoding? And it's not particularly clear, or rather, there are many aspects to this. Certainly, according to the Atkinson and Schifrin model, model um, of memory, um, uh, items enter into long-term memory based on a, on, a, on a transfer from short-term memory. And it also looks like um, there is an important role for rehearsal, meaning rehearsal might be helpful in uh, um, uh, transferring information from short-term memory into long-term memory. And there are, there are various approaches um, to uh, rehearsal. The two basic categories of rehearsal are maintenance rehearsal, and this is really just a repetition of some information over and over. And this doesn't seem to be particularly effective. Um, it might give a little bit, a little bump in long-term memory, but, but doesn't help too much. Uh, a much more effective strategy seems to be elaborative rehearsal. So this is going beyond repetition, but actually sort of assigning meaning and elaborating information, uh, often collocating information inside sort of a, a broader framework of things you already know. That seems to help information stick uh, into long-term memory. Of course, life is plenty of examples of things that you didn't need to encode into long-term memory. You didn't um, rehearse, you didn't elaborate. And yet, for a reason or another, it has stuck with you all these years. Uh, so certainly the mechanics of this are still um, fairly uh, complicated and not entirely understood. Okay, here's what's more, what I want to do now. I want to do um, a demo. Uh, I want to test your memory. So here's what we're going. Here's what you need. You're going to need a pen, um, uh, some paper, and a pair of eyes. Um, open, possibly. Now the pen and paper. No cheating. You need them after. Once we're done. Okay. Don't cheat. It spoils the fun. I don't know how you're going to respond, anyways. So um, don't ruin the fun for yourself. Um, the instructions are the following. I will show you a list of words. They'll be presented at a, at a pace of uh, one word every two seconds. Uh, I think it's a list of 20 words. Um, just look at them, encode them, no writing, and, 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 and try to encode them for a memory test that will happen at the end. In fact, after the last word, you will see the word on the, on the screen, you'll see the word recall. At that point, just write down as many, as many words as you can Whatever order you want, it doesn't matter. Okay, just as soon as you see recall, the word recall, write down as quickly as possible. Okay, so um, take a, pause this video for a second, make sure you have pen, paper, open eyes, and, uh, and as soon as you're ready, restart the video. Just so you know, the words will appear in that square. Okay, so that's where I want you to look. Ready? Three, two, one.
Rick Hall, go. Okay, let me do this. If you want a little more time, just press pause. But make sure you write down all the words you remember. So, now I have two uh, or three questions for you. First, how many words did you recall? And this, I expect to be quite variable. Um, usually when I do this in class, I tend to get a fairly good span uh, in terms of just how many words people uh, seem to be able to recall from this list. Now, more important to me is the next two questions. Which did you recall and in what order did you recall them? Um, see, um, here, this is the list of words that you saw. And with respect to the second question, um, in what order did you recall them? My guess is that you, the first thing you wrote down is something like dance, rifle, nurse, or maybe maybe also seat and uncle, um, something like that. But I, I think you first wrote down some words from the end of this list. Uh, and then I think you wrote down dime, fork, bulb, lion, um, lion, and maybe, you know, one or two more or something like that. And then once you were done with that, you know, you, you, you wrote some words from the middle, maybe some, you know, randomly distributed words, maybe some words that uh, stood out from the middle. Am I right? Well, see, in other words, um, back to the question of which ones did you recall? My guess is that you recalled some items from the very beginning, items from the very end, and the random item from the middle. So if I could write out for each word, for each position in, in, in this order, um, how frequently people um, report words that are in each of these positions or the probability of recalling a word given the different positions, I think it would look something like this. You'd, you'd remember the first few words, pretty well, these have a high chance of being recalled. Then the words at the end also have a high chance of being recalled. And then there's a big middle here where words have low probability of recall, except every now and then there'll be some random one that stands out to you and so you'll recall it. Um, and see, uh, this effect, sort of this, 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 this uh, U-shaped effect is known as the serial position effect. And um, now the idea is that this effect is really based on two main aspects. Um, on the one hand, you seem to recall words at the beginning, and this is known as the primacy effect. The words at the beginning of the list are better remembered. Second, the words at the end, and this is known as a recency effect. The most recent items also get remembered. As I said, it's then, then it's a big middle that, doesn't, that, that usually gets forgotten. So let's start with the recency effect. Now, the recency effect is typically attributed to the fact that those last few words are still hanging out in your short-term memory. And so as soon as the list arrives to the end, you still have those words in your short-term memory. They haven't faded yet, right? We have just about 15 seconds. So it hasn't faded yet. And then that's why you write down those first, because you know they're in short-term memory. And so the first thing you want to do is put those on paper, because those are at risk of, uh, of fading away. Um, and see, um, experiments have shown that indeed, if you fill up work in memory, um, or, if you, make, um, or if, you, if you increase the time in between the end of the, um, uh, of the list, and when participants are asked to report the words, then that will uh, hurt 
um, the, the recency effect that will hurt the last few items. In this example, there are two groups. Uh, one group did exactly the experiment you did, and that's this U-shaped data right here. So the first few um, items are, re are recalled pretty well, and then the last few items are, record are recalled fairly well, and then the middle ones sort of not, not great. The second group, instead of recalling right away, had a 30 seconds delay before they could start reporting um, the words, be before they could sort of recall the words. And the same is true if at the end of this list, you give a task such as counting back um, by three, starting from a random number, that also will load up your short-term memory. The effect of it is that you're going to lose the items in short-term memory. And that's exactly what you see in this sort of in the, in the red data set. The primacy effect is right there. So the first items are good, but the last few items, they faded from short-term memory before you could start the recall, either because we increased the delay between the end of the list and when you recall, or because I've used some kind of distractor task to fill up your short-term memory, which displaces the, um, the items from the list. So again, the recency effect is about items that are still in your short-term memory. That's why you get that bump at the end of the list. Now, the primacy effect, on the other hand, is typically attributed to the fact that words at the beginning of a sequence have a chance at getting rehearsed because there's still time and, 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 and you've only encountered a few items. You know, um, it might look something like, you know, if this were the list, uh, you know, you'd hear fish and you go, okay, fish, 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 fish. Then cow, and you go, fish, cow, fish, cow, fish, cow, fish, cow. Then bird, and you go, fish, cow, bird, fish, cow, bird, fish, cow, dog, fish, cow, bird, dog. Fish, cow. And then it just, it gets the rhythm at which the words come at you becomes too quick for you to be able to rehearse this growing list every time. As a result, fish, cow, bird, maybe dog, are getting, are getting rehearsed and have a chance at getting into long-term memory. Of course, after that, the list is just too long, and that's why there's that big middle. That big middle sort of are items that are, you can't commit to long-term memory because you, you can't rehearse things quick enough. And of course, they can't be in your short-term memory because um, they're too far from the end. And so, as I said, the primacy effect is really about long-term memory, the ability um, to place some of these items, the initial items, when there's still time to rehearse, in long-term memory. And this explains why you typically record them, you typically report them after the items in short-term memory, because those in short-term memory, you know they're about to, to fade away if you don't recall them. So you recall those. Then you go back to the very beginning of the list uh, where there are items that, you know, those are committed to long-term memory. So you've got those. They're not gonna fade away in the next 20 seconds. So that's why you first report to those in short-term memory before they, 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 they fade. And then you go back to those that you've now memorized. And then, you know, you go towards the middle of the list. And, and, and one interesting way of assessing the claim that primacy effect is about committing, rehearsing and committing to long-term memory um, is by changing the presentation's speed at which words hit you. The faster words hit you, the less time you have to repeat the words and put them in a, and commit uh, that list, uh, at least the initial words, um, to memory. Um, and indeed, if you increase the presentation pace, the primacy effect decreases. The recency effect, on the other hand, um, doesn't um, either doesn't decrease or gets a little bit better, just because if I tell you words faster, your short-term memory will be able to encode a few more words, since short-term memory is a given is a given, um, is, a given um, is a given period in time. If I tell you words faster, there will be more words in those same 15 seconds. And indeed, as an experiment by, by Yankin in 1968, what you're seeing here is pretty much the same experiment you just did, but there were four groups. And what changed across the groups was the pace at which the speed at which words were delivered. 
So if you deliver words at four seconds intervals or two seconds intervals, you get these two lines. The first few items, the first is recalled at 90% of the time, the second one just about 70, 75, and then you see, you see the conventional U-shape, um, serial position effect. Now look at the words that are presented either at one second apart or half a second apart, which are these two lines. Even the first, the very first item is only recalled just about 70% of the time. And by, by the time you get to the third item, you're down to, um, you know, 10 to, to 10 to 25, 30% chance of recalling that word. And, and the reason is that these items are just coming so quick at you that you don't have time to articulate them in your mind and repeat them in order to commit them to memory. Once again, however, if you look at the recency effect, that is untouched by this. As I said, it's either untouched or it's made a little bit better because you can fit more words in the same amount of time. Um, so the recency effect is about words in short-term memory. The primacy effect is about words in um, long-term memory. Now, interestingly, the big middle, the big middle is always there. <laughs> The big middle, it doesn't even happen, it doesn't even matter, uh, sorry, how long a list is. It doesn't matter if it's 10 words, 15, 20, 30, or 40 words. The big middle is just the big middle. And you can see that right here. So Murdoch uh, had different groups of participants. And they either got um, lists with 10 words, 15, 20, 30, or 40 words. And then he did exactly the same experiment. And the question was, does the length of the list modify the serial position effect? Turns out, not exactly. It hurts a little bit that the primacy does get hurt if you get much, much, very, very long lists. Presumably because even that initial rehearsing is not enough to truly commit something deep into long-term memory, if you have 40, 40 words. But, but qualitatively, the shape is exactly the same. It's exactly a U. And it doesn't matter if it's 10 items, 15, 20, 30, or 40. You still get a bump, a bump at the beginning, primacy, long-term memory, and a bump at the end, which is recency. Okay. And the middle, and the big middle is just pretty much flat to somewhere around, I guess, 10, 10 to 20 percent. I mean, depending on how long the list is, but uh, you can see that essentially there's this big flat in the middle. And all it does essentially is just it extends the longer the list is.